It's been three years since the last mainline Assassin's Creed game, which is the longest gap ever between two mainline games in the series. But now, Assassin's Creed is back with Mirage, coming to all platforms in just a few weeks on October 5th. I know some of you are super excited just to see Assassin's Creed return with Mirage and some of you are hyped because Mirage is going back to the roots of the series. But how much of a return to the roots is it? How different is the gameplay in Mirage compared to recent entries in the franchise? What are the new things in the game? To answer all these questions, I recently got to experience over an hour of gameplay from the early parts of Mirage. I have a lot of thoughts, so let's dive into it. Firstly, my thoughts on the setting, Baghdad. It's been a while since we've seen a city in an Assassin's Creed game that's this big and meticulously detailed. The city has a lively atmosphere with various NPCs and lots of points of interest. It's well designed with plenty of parkour routes and places to hide. The interiors are some of the best in the series. While there are a few old props around, the city is filled with new ones that give it a fresh feel. You'll notice lots of little details, especially in places like small stalls and big structures. Overall, Baghdad looks fun, interesting and stands out as the game's major highlight. Moving on, here's what I think about the basics, parkour, stealth and combat. Parkour feels just a tiny bit faster and seems to flow a little smoother, but ultimately it doesn't seem much different from the recent Assassin's Creed games. However, the city is designed for parkour this time around, which is a big plus, as it's likely to make the parkour experience much better. Also, corner swings are back and a new move, pole vault, is introduced. It would have been nice if the game also included side and back ejects though. Stealth certainly seems to be the main focus on Mirage, with lots of tools and levels designed for it. The game actually encourages you to use stealth more and the clearest sign of that is the new Assassin's Focus ability. Assassin's Focus lets you assassinate up to 4 enemies in a row super quickly, but you can only use it outside of combat and to activate it, you must fill a special gauge by performing stealth kills. There's also a strategic element to Assassin's Focus, as you must be careful about where you'll end up after the last kill, or you might be easily detected. Assassin's Focus is completely optional, so you can choose whether or not to use it. So yeah, Assassin's Focus is all about being sneaky and calculated which is very much in line with the whole assassin vibe. And hey, who doesn't love executing a well-planned series of stealthy takedowns? I do have one criticism about Assassin's Focus, its presentation. In a game that aims to recapture the grounded and realistic feel of the earlier Assassin's Creed titles, having Basim literally teleport when using this ability feels a bit immersion-breaking. The developers have offered an in-universe explanation for Basim's teleportation, saying that it is not actually teleportation, but rather a representation of Basim's incredible agility and speed, which causes the Animus to struggle to keep up with his movements, resulting in the visual effect. But in a game like Mirage, which aims to recapture the magic of the older Assassin's Creed titles, I would have preferred a more grounded and realistic approach for Assassin's Focus. Although there are chain assassinations, there's one big thing missing in the stealth gameplay, and that's a second hidden blade. Basim using just one hidden blade makes sense, since his right ring finger is intact in Valhalla. But I really wish they could have somehow added a second hidden blade, as I love dual hidden blades in Assassin's Creed games. There is no XP-based progression in Mirage, instead, progression is linear and story-driven. The skill tree is back, but it is smaller in scope. One interesting thing about the chain assassination skill in Mirage is that you can only chain assassinate distant enemies by throwing knives. So, you can only pull off this move if you have throwing knives available. If not, you won't be able to chain assassinate distant enemies. Combat in Mirage seems to be more of a backup option rather than the main focus of the game, 
It is more straightforward than the recent games in the series. Basim's only weapons in the game are a dagger and a sword, which he dual wields, and combat follows a routine of attack, dodge, parry, counter attack. Fighting is harder when you're outnumbered this time because items that restore your health are rare enough that you can't always rely on them. One small thing I really like, you can now eat food from pots to regain your health. So, while the focus on combat is less, a bit more depth would have been nice. Mirage has a good number of enemy types, although not as many as Valhalla, which is understandable given its smaller scale. There are still plenty of different enemy types in Mirage. My favorite are enemies with a flamethrower-like device. They look badass and deadly. Also, enemies can kick you back, throw knives or rocks, and even heal mid-combat. So, Mirage's enemies are a strong point. Now, let's talk about investigations, which are at the core of the gameplay. When you're conducting an investigation, your job is to search for clues and talk to people. This helps you figure out where to go, how to get in, and who or what you're looking for. As you progress through an investigation, you'll eventually uncover an assassination target. In the game menu, there's a dedicated section for investigations. Here, you'll find details about various investigations. Completing investigations and killing the assassination targets that they lead to will unlock black box missions, which are large-scale assassination missions that can be carried out in multiple ways. So yeah, the investigation system looks like a pretty solid part of the game. There's also a contracts board where you can find assassination, stealing and escort side missions. You can collect all contracts on the board at once and then do them when you're ready. Next, let's talk about tokens. They're optional, but to me, they appear to be the most impressive and well thought out addition to the game. Tokens are a currency you can earn by completing contracts, helping the people of Baghdad, opening certain chests, or by pickpocketing folks on the streets. There are three types of tokens in the game, merchant favor tokens, power tokens, and scholar tokens. As for the uses of these tokens, well, there are loads of them. You can use tokens to hire NPCs to do things like distract or attack guards. They also grant you a certain discount when buying from merchants, helping in removing notoriety and unlock certain chests to steal from. And while investigating a case or tracking down a target, tokens can be used to bribe certain NPCs. These NPCs will then give you information that, for example, narrows down a location you are looking for. All in all, tokens are a big part of the game's economy and are well integrated, adding much needed depth to the in-game economy system. So, tokens are another big highlight of the game for me. And as for the story, it seems to focus more on the assassins or the hidden ones, which is what I always want in an Assassin's Creed game. I'm really looking forward to how the story unfolds. Then, there's Basim and his story. I like Basim and I'm eager to see how he evolves and becomes the Basim we know in Valhalla. He's not one-dimensional, so playing as him is something I'm looking forward to as well. Overall, from what I've seen, the story has potential and I hope it lives up to it. So, should you be excited for Assassin's Creed Mirage? Well, Mirage is a smaller game than the likes of Valhalla and Odyssey but it appears to be a solid and enjoyable game. So if you're a fan of old school Assassin's Creed, you should be excited. But don't expect new and revolutionary things from Mirage. If that's what you're looking for, you might want to wait for Codename Red. Personally, I'm excited to play Mirage, especially after experiencing the new gameplay. And I hope the final game turns out well. Subscribe to get more videos on Assassin's Creed Mirage when it is released. Thanks for watching. Do you think we need luck?